Well, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me. And a couple of things have happened in 2023. One is I got a haircut. Uh, second one is I got a new light. Uh, it's an Amaran 60D shooting through a white 50 inch umbrella. And let me know if you think, uh, think it's created any kind of improvement in my lighting. It won't make me look any prettier, I know that. So, you know the drill, comments below. Uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, a preamp and whether or not you need an RF preamp on your HF receiver or your medium format or long wave receiver. I purchased uh, this particular preamp in a board form, tested board form, from SV1AVN. He's a, a Greek ham radio operator. Check his uh, eBay store out on, um, on eBay. Yeah, that's where he keeps it. And he's got all kinds of interesting RF-oriented items in there. And he didn't uh, didn't pay me. He, he doesn't know I, I, uh, I'm making this video and I purchased this preamp with my own money. And then I uh, stuffed it into a nice little box like this. Got a power bypass switch here so I can kind of do an A-B comparison between having the preamp in and not, and of course a couple of connectors. So all told, it's kind of a sub $100 kind of exercise, so it's kind of fun. So why do we need a preamp for our receivers? Well, I was a little disappointed with some of my uh, shortwave listening. Uh, it seems like I wasn't pulling signals out of the noise. And I guess we have this perception that, oh, a preamp is going to fix that. Well. As you'll see, that's not necessarily the case, but what we're trying to do ultimately is improve signal to noise ratio. And uh, so stay tuned. And uh, this is a nice short little video showing you how I tested this preamp. What we're looking at here is SDR Uno software. We're just looking at the spectral display. Uh, SDR Play, who made the RSPDX uh, SDR receiver I'm using currently developed this software for use with their SDR receivers. So what we're looking at on one particular small part of the spectrum around 14.35 is noise that's generated uh, or the noise that exists I should say at the input to the SDR receiver when a dummy, when terminated with the dummy load, it has currently a 50 ohm dummy load on, and the preamp is turned off, so it's bypassed. Now, if I switch the preamp on, strangely enough, what you actually see is um, the noise level actually dropping. Again, the input of the preamp is terminated with 50 ohms with a dummy load, and possibly the the noise level dropped because the preamp might be doing some sort of filtering to actually reduce the level, but it at least shows you that the preamp itself is not contributing to the noise floor. Now you'll notice that the, the program is calculating what the equivalent uh, noise level is, the input referred noise, to the receiver. Now this is with the preamp bypassed, and it's, it's showing that it's about 94 dBm, minus 94 dBm. With the preamp now bypassed again, but this time the input to the receiver is connected to an outdoor trap vertical. And you can see the sideband activity on 20 meters just, uh, just below the center marker on our uh, spectral display. So now it's reading around 91 and a half dBm, minus 91 and a half dBm, which is about um, approximately two or three dB higher than when we terminated the input to the receiver with uh, just the dummy load. So now you can see that uh, the noise level actually increased when I turned on the preamp. And as we established a little bit earlier, uh, the preamp itself is not contributing noise. This is just the amplification unfortunately, of the antenna noise, and it has now gone up to approximately 
uh, minus 79 dB. So that shows you the gain of the preamp, which is rated at about 15 or 16 dB. It looks like it's about uh, pretty close to 15 right now. Um, if you take the difference between uh, 91.5 and 78 or so. Okay, now we're, we have the preamp off, it's being bypassed, and uh, what you're seeing is WWV. And if I change the, this reference line here, you can see that currently a noise floor is sitting around 113, 114 dBm, or minus 114 dBm. And you'll also notice that uh, the reading up up here says that currently the signal strength is varying, but it's sort of between 67 and 77, something like that. Now I've switched on the preamp, and if we move our reference line up to where the noise is, you'll see it's around a minus 100 uh, dBm. And the signal strength now for uh, WWV has increased to the, you know, the high 40s and low 50s, minus dBm. So there's definitely a, an audible signal-to-noise improvement uh, when the preamp is turned on in this particular situation. Now watch the noise floor as we go from 15 megahertz up to 25 megahertz. It drops quite a bit. So the noise at higher frequencies on shortwave during the day tend to be quieter than those uh, frequencies that are lower. As a result, we get more improvement uh, in signal-to-noise ratio, as you'll see in a moment when I switch off the, and bypass the preamp. The signal-to-noise ratio actually improves with the preamp at these higher frequencies. Now, conversely, the noise is much higher, as you notice, uh, uh, compared to that yellow line that uh, shows where the noise was at around 25 megahertz. We're now down at the bottom end of the band uh, on CHU, the Canadian Time Station, at 3.33 megahertz. And the preamp is on at present. Now the preamp is off. And you can see that the, the signal-to-noise ratio did improve somewhat. Let's switch it back on again. The amp is on, but it's not as dramatic an improvement as it was at the higher frequencies. So it seems that the lower the noise floor to start with, uh, the better the signal-to-noise improvement using the preamp. And, uh, Improved signal-to-noise ratio means better intelligibility, better listenability to the signal. So as advertised, this preamp is low noise. And uh, it, it's also a, a push-pull configuration, which means that uh, for common mode signals coming in on, on your transmission line, your feed line from your antenna, uh, it will tend to reject those, whether it's noise or interfering signal. But what we what we've uh, we've just seen is that the preamp doesn't always fix the problem. Uh, particularly, it seems when the the noise that's impinging on the antenna is almost as high as the signal itself that you're trying to to listen to. A preamp is just going to amplify that noise, whether it's atmospheric or environmental, you know, electrical noise that's around around you. It's being picked up by the antenna the same as the um, desired signal is being picked up. So the, the preamp will just amplify those. You did see a little bit of an improvement at uh, the 3.33 megahertz uh, signal, CHU. Um, but generally, it's not as good as when you have a low noise floor. And as we saw, the higher you go in frequency during the day on HF, the, uh, the lower the noise floor typically is. 
And that's where I saw the best improvement in signal to noise ratio, because that's the important parameter. Well, the intention of this video was to help you make a decision as to whether or not you thought an RF preamp would, would help out in your situation. Um, if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll see you later on. Thank you.